Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman and Lucy Lehman, and today I wanna to give you some great hydrangea tips to show you how I care for my hydrangeas in the summer. So if we haven't met yet, it's nice to meet you. My name is Kelly Lehman, I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey, and I love giving you guys fun free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell notification so you know whenever we post another fun free flower tip video. So let's dive right in. So here it is, July, and we're in my New Jersey secret garden and flower farm, and I wanna show you how I care for some of my hydrangeas at this time of the year. So I'm sitting in front of a whole bunch of my endless summer hydrangea, and um, I guess it's pretty apparent that I didn't get blooms from them yet this year. And I think this happened to a lot of people this year. The reason why these hydrangeas didn't bloom is because we had a really, really warm winter and then we had a cold snap in the spring. And what happened was that cold snap wound up freezing off a lot of the buds that were put in place on the old wood. And I'm gonna to try to show you one of those pieces right now. So each of these kind of burnt out, frozen off buds was supposed to be uh, where the flowers were gonna come from, but they were frozen off uh, by that cold blast that we got in late spring. And so I don't have flowers. I don't have my first uh, rush of blooms that usually come from my endless summer. So a lot of you have mop head hydrangeas that are considered rebloomers, bloomers uh, just like this. And I know a lot of people have, you know, written in the comments, how come my hydrangeas didn't bloom? And that's probably the reason why. But I'm not too worried because I know that these rebloomers will give me a second flush of flowers. And that comes from all the new green growth that came in from, um, you know, like that new growth that came in from the ground. So the blooms that were actually frozen off were the blooms that were on that old wood that was put in place last year because a lot of these start forming their blooms on old wood and they start forming in August. So these are some steps that I'm gonna to take to make sure that this is going to bloom beautifully by the end of the summer. Uh, and then I'm gonna have gorgeous blooms next year also. So what I'm doing right now is I'm coming in here and I'm doing like a little cleanup of my plant. Uh, I know that other flower tribe members have said to me, I know you're not supposed to prune your hydrangeas in summer, which is true but you could give it a cleanup, especially if it's kind of spilling over onto sidewalks or onto places that you don't want it to be or if it's just getting too tall. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of come in here and clean up some of these uh, blooms that are coming, spilling over the side. So guys, I'm coming to this hydrangea that I see is starting to get a little bit too overgrown out of the bed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a clip. I'm going to take this and I'm going to give it a clip right above a fresh set of leaves. But instead of getting rid of the stem now, I'm going to actually make a cutting out of it. And guys, I made a really detailed uh, video showing you exactly how to make cuttings so you can propagate some of your hydrangeas. Uh, but I'm just gonna do it like the quick way right now. I'm gonna cut some of these leaves. I'm actually gonna cut this center leaf right out. I'm gonna give it a little scrape. I'm gonna dip it in some rooting hormone. And there's all different types of rooting hormones you can use. And right now I've got a little bit of perlite in this cup that I poked holes with using a hot fork. So I had like the fork tips were very hot. I poked some holes in them. One of the easiest ways to do that is to take a fork, just heat up the tips of the fork. You don't want to make it too hot, otherwise it's going to burn your hand as the heat travels up. So it's just the tips. And he's gently just putting it into the plastic. And then you've got some super easy to create holes on the bottom of your cup. And I put some water here because I want to make sure that it had drainage. Get the water coming out. And now I'm just gonna put my cutting in here. And I'm gonna wind up placing it in a place that's not in direct sunlight, but still it will get some sun probably like right underneath here. And within a few weeks, I'm gonna have gorgeous roots and I'm gonna have a brand new hydrangea plant. To make your success rate a little bit higher with these propagations, you can add a little Ziploc bag over the top of your rooting. And that just creates what's kind of like a little tiny miniature greenhouse. So it keeps that moisture trapped inside. The plant will not dry out because these leaves are really delicate. And sometimes if you don't cover them, the plant dries out before the roots are, you know, like established. So I keep this over here. You can tell I have a whole bunch going on down here. Sometimes I'll keep the bag in place with like a little pencil. And you can see what some of my other hydrangeas look like right now. 
that I'm propagating. And once again, they are not in direct sunlight. They're uh, in the shade. Uh, this other hydrangea plant that I have. So I have a whole bunch going on. And here's, here's kind of like that greenhouse effect again. So you can set, see this one doesn't have a pencil holding it up, but it's fine. So sometimes it's easier just to keep it simple. And some of these I also mix with a little bit of vermiculite and uh, perlite. So either combination is fine. Sometimes I'll just use vermiculite, uh, but you can use any of those combinations. This is what one of my cuttings looks like. This has got to be about four or five weeks old. Oh, I'm kind of lifting the plant out as I'm lifting the bag. But I want to show you what some of these beautiful roots look like. And this one I used uh, vermiculite, just pure vermiculite. But if I scratch it away a couple weeks later, you're going to see beautiful, beautiful roots right there. I realized it was hard to see before with all the vermiculite on it. So let me just give it a little cleansing dip here. There you can really see those beautiful roots. I'm going to let this plant stay in the vermiculite or perlite for a few more weeks to get stronger before I replant it in the garden. While I'm here, I'm also taking a look at some interesting things like this branch that I see is kind of like flopping on the ground over here. So it's kind of on the ground. And what's going to happen is this plant is going to want to self-propagate. So a lot of times you'll see the stems laying on the ground. You can give it a little bit of help if you want to create a new plant. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll just move away some of the mulch, some of the dirt, I will clip off the top because I don't want it to flower. I want it to put all of its energy into creating new plants. I'm going to get rid of some of these damaged leaves. And I'm going to wind up giving it a little bit of a scrape down here. And you could just use your fingernail. Sometimes I just scrape some of that hair off. And here you can either use some rooting hormone like I just did. If you don't have rooting hormone, it's not a big deal. This just speeds up the process. To lay that in the ground, cover it with some of that dirt. And then I'm going to put a rock on top. And eventually, this plant is going to form a whole bunch of brand new roots. And then I'm going to have a brand new hydrangea. And I showed you exactly how we wind up cutting that from the mother plant in another video. Uh, and I will link all of my hydrangea videos in my playlist at the end of this video. Another step that I take for my hydrangea care in July is I will wind up giving uh, a little bit of rose tone fertilizer to each of my mop heads. Now, rose tone is terrific. I use this um, for my hydrangeas when I do fertilize. Now, a lot of you that watch the channel know that a lot of times I don't fertilize any of my hydrangeas. If they're doing really well, I leave them alone. I don't fertilize them. I'm a big fan of just keeping it super simple. And what happens is a lot of people wind up over fertilizing their hydrangeas and they wind up getting gorgeous beautiful green leaves and they don't have any flowers so sometimes the plant just has too much nitrogen in it uh, because people over fertilize and also sometimes lawn fertilizers run into their flower beds and that's really high in nitrogen so that might be another reason why some of your hydrangeas aren't uh, blooming but at this point these guys aren't looking very good we had that you know crazy spring zap and i really want to encourage those blooms to come through so i see i have a lot of you know like nice green growth and I'm gonna fertilize them now, but I'm gonna make sure that I don't fertilize them after like the 1st of August. Gardeners in other states might wind up still fertilizing some of their hydrangeas up until mid-August. It kind of depends on your neck of the woods. But in my neck of the woods, New Jersey, I usually don't do this after August 1st. Because if I fertilize these going into their dormant season, they're gonna wind up putting uh, up a lot of brand new growth and that's going to wind up probably wind up, you know, like, like snapping off or freezing off because they're just not going to be sturdy enough. So only do the step um, in like, you know, up until like maybe the first of, of August or like a little bit after that, because uh, you don't want to fertilize going into that dormant period. So let's get into this. So I've got my rose tone. I've got like a little cup going on over here. Pull the bag over here. And I'm going to look for the drip line of my hydrangea. Now the drip line of a hydrangea or the drip line of any plant is where the water runs off of it. So when it rained last night, there was a whole bunch of water and it was running off of these leaves. And so where it kind of hit the ground is considered the drip line. And the reason why you fertilize by the drip line is because you don't want to bump up that fertilizer against the base of the plant because you can burn the plant if you bump it up against it. I have to get rid of that weed. Anyway, so I'm going to just kind of go around this. I'm going to take my little like trowel or like a little bit of rake if you want because you want to kind of scratch it into the soil. So what I'm going to do is make like a little moat. I'm going to go around the entire plant and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sprinkling. 
you do this around the entire plant. And then I'm just going to kind of scratch it into the soil about an inch deep. And then it kind of needs some water to get it activated. So it's going to rain later on this afternoon, so I'm not going to bother watering it in because I know that it's going to get that good rain to kind of activate it. And that's going to encourage this plant, um, you know, to like give me some beautiful, beautiful blooms. I only occasionally will fertilize my mop head hydrangeas after spring. And I don't do this step with my limelight hydrangeas, my panicles, my smooth hydrangeas, because they all come in on new growth and they don't need that second dose. Another thing that I'm doing this time of year is I'm taking a look at the blooms that did make it and I'm finding the ones that are kind of spent, uh, they're kind of washed out. Um, some flower pride members have said, you know, why do my hydrangeas lose their color? And guys, this happens to me too. It's just a matter of the sun hitting it. Um, you know, a lot of it gets kind of washed out. If you can plant your hydrangeas in a place where they get morning sun and afternoon shade, a lot of times that helps keep the color intact better. But these guys uh, are in a whole bunch of sun, so they wash out very quickly. But what I'm gonna do is come in here and give them a snip and I am gonna make like a beautiful bouquet out of some of these flowers that are pretty much spent instead of leaving them on the plant and having the plant have to take care of it. And another thing that's gonna happen when I clip off this flower is I'm gonna encourage two more flowers to come from it next year. And I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna go down to a fresh set of leaves and also a fresh set of leaf nodes. And the leaf nodes look like this. See this here? Should be one on the other side too. So these are the leaf nodes, one, two. Next year, both of these are going to give me, hopefully, stems that will give me beautiful flowers. And I'm going to ensure that this happens because I'm gonna give it a clip right above those leaf nodes. I'm give it a clip. But in the meantime, I'm gonna take this bloom and I'm going to plunk it right in water. I'm gonna get rid of these leaves because when it goes in the water, I don't want the stem to have to bring the water up through those leaves because that's going to be less water that's going to go to my bloom. And this will still stay fresh uh, for quite a while. And then it's going to dry out to a beautiful dry cut flower as long as I don't put it in direct sunlight in my kitchen. So I'm going to plunk this right in some water. And I made another video showing you how to make beautiful bouquets and how to dry out your hydrangeas. And once again, that will be linked in our hydrangea playlist. But I want to show you one quick florist power tip that I do with this bloom because it is a little bit washed out and I can pretty much spruce it up with a little bit of floral spray paint. So I'm gonna take some floral spray paint and guys, this is just for flowers. It's not um, like actual spray paint. And there's a whole bunch of different um, brands of these, different varieties. I'll put a link to this one in descriptions below. And I'm basically just going to spray some of this on this bloom. I'm making sure that the bloom isn't wet. So don't do this after it rains. Otherwise it's gonna probably just run off of it. And it comes in all different colors, greens, purples, reds, magentas, pink, you name it. Super fun. And now I'm gonna plunk it in the water. Guys, um, never paint your flowers when it's actually on the stem because it's gonna prevent the flower from like burst. All right, so this guy looks great. And this is what one of our arrangements looks like. And what we did was we used a whole bunch of these blooms uh, that were, you know, like kind of coming in on some of my other mop head hydrangeas these were cut before they dried out but i do love them this is going out the barn door today and we mixed them with some of our annabelle hydrangeas and i want to show you something that i do to my annabelle hydrangeas this time of year because a lot of times they're flopping so let's take a walk over to the annabelles so this is what a lot of my annabelle hydrangeas look like this year i wound up pruning them back in the beginning of spring and i usually do not do that because when i don't do that i have smaller blows and it has a better network of old wood stems that usually holds it up. But I did prune them back this year because I wasn't getting as many blooms as I used to get. So it gave it kind of a recharge. Um, and this is what it looks like now. So I have all these heavy blooms and we had a huge rainstorm. Everything kind of flopped over. And what I did was I put in some uh, gardener's tape a while ago. I just kind of wrapped it around the plant to keep it in place. And this worked out really well until the blooms got really, really tall and really, really heavy. So I needed to add a step instead of just tying some gardening tape around it, I wound up doing this. And you can tell this plant is so much more upright. It's standing up. So we have two dowels back here, one, two. And what we did was we wrapped a whole bunch of the gardener's tape around the top of the, you know, one of the tallest, you know, spots on the dowel, or like almost the tallest spot. And then we wrapped it around the plant. You can tell it kind of goes around the plant. Put it above a set of leaves because the leaves are also gonna prevent the tape from slipping down. And then we just, you know, 
kind of like tied it up like this. And now you can tell how beautiful these Annabelles are standing up. Thank you so much for joining us in this video. And please say hi to us over on my Cranberry Fields Instagram page. You can also find us on TikTok. And I made a whole bunch of podcasts for you. You can find those wherever you listen to your podcast. And know that I made a whole bunch of online flower courses for you with easy to follow tips on how to grow beautiful flowers just like these in your own garden. I will put all of those in descriptions below. And please also let me know where you're viewing this from in this great big beautiful world. I love to see how our flower tribe is growing around the globe each week. Also check out our Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group because there's thousands of gardeners from all over the world and they're asking and answering loads of garden questions over there. And know that YouTube has allowed me to have a super thanks uh, button attached to this channel. And if you like to buy us a cup of coffee or I'll let us know if you appreciate these videos, uh, that would be terrific. Or you could just give us a like or a comment below. I would appreciate that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.